Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making a lime curd meringue tart. A big 10 inch tart in one of the false bottom tart pans. Amazing, springy, summery, citrusy, light, fluffy. It's got all the components for a wonderful treat for family and friends. But before we get started, I'd like you to click that notification button because I want you to see all my upcoming videos and tips because you're going to love them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make a sugar cookie crust known as a pet sucre in French. And we're going to be rolling it out and putting it into our false bottom tar pan and baking it blind. And that means we put this on a sheet pan, we put some parchment paper on the inside, and then we fill it with weights or dried beans and bake it so it just makes that fully cooked shell. Because our lime curd is going to be made on top of the stove, poured on top, and then a luscious meringue. And then we get to blowtorch it and make it all, all sort of toasty, oasty, oasty, just sort of like a marshmallow. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so an electric mixer, you're going to take one stick and five tablespoons of softened butter, and you're going to see this is very soft, and you see how soft it is? It just sort of falls into the bowl, and that's exactly what I want. And then instead of granulated sugar, we're going to be using half a cup of confectioner sugar, so that's powdered sugar. And I'm going to put that right in with my butter. And this is very similar to how you would make a sugar cookie, hence the name sugar cookie dough. So you could actually roll this out and use it as a sugar cookie after you bake it. So we're just going to put this on sort of low to medium speed. You don't want it light and fluffy. We're not trying to get any air in here. We're not trying to um, actually get it to rise. We're just trying to combine the butter and the sugar. And it won't do it unless it's softened. Now, in the meantime, I have one egg yolk and I have some heavy cream. Now, this is not measured out yet. What I only use is about a tablespoon of cream, but depending on how you measured your flour and how, uh, you know, you don't want to pack your flour, obviously, but sometimes you might need a little bit more if the dough is a little dry. And remember, flour absorbs moisture from the air. So on a rainy day, it may be wetter. On a really hot, dry day in your kitchen, it may be um, a little bit drier and you may need a little bit more heavy cream. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add that egg yolk, one egg yolk, one large egg yolk. I'm just going to put that in there. And then I'm going to put in one tablespoon of heavy cream. Just one tablespoon, no more right now. We may not need any more, but we may need some more. And that's what I like to do. Never say never. So sometimes you may need a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is add one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm just going to add that in. And that's our dough. That is our sugar cookie crust dough uh, for the bottom of our tart. And you can use this for any type of tart or pie that you want to make that bakes blind. So if you wanted to make, let's say, uh, a chocolate cream pie, you could fill this tart shell after you bake it blind. Uh, instead of lime curd, you could fill it with chocolate pudding or chocolate custard. Anything like that would be absolutely luscious. Remember that the custard part is going to get cooked on top of the stove. So a little loud noise. I'm going to get that in there. And I don't think we need any more. I really don't think we need any more. And I'll show you what's inside. So let me stop it. It's a little crumbly. We're going to put it in plastic wrap and we're going to chill it. And if I said, gee, I don't feel like making my, my tart today. I want to make it next week or I want to make it tomorrow. No problem. So watch what I'm going to do. If it was really wet, I could have taken all this uh, dough and put it into a bowl and sort of pushed it together. I don't think I have to. So I'm going to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do, as you can see inside my bowl, it is a dough. It's not too wet. There's a little bit of dry ingredients on the bottom, but we're going to combine them. I have my bowl scraper. 
and that's that plastic malleable scraper. If you don't have one, no worries. Just use a rubber spatula. Uh, and the other thing that you always have with you all the time are your hands. Just take the dough and push it off. Now the dough will be soft. And if you've ever made cookies, sugar cookies, uh, the dough is usually very soft in the beginning. All right. So I'm going to take my bowl scraper and I'm going to take this dough out. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a go around just so I get some of my dry ingredients incorporated. It's a lovely dough, if I do say so myself. It's not going to be too sweet. It's not going to be not sweet. It's going to be perfect for our crust because remember, the majority of our sweetness is coming from our filling. All right, so I'm going to put that on a piece of plastic wrap that I've already laid out because I'm so organized. You have to be organized because if you have it and there's no plastic wrap, there's no place to put it. So get all the good stuff out. Get all that good stuff out. And then you're going to put it into a disc. Square, circular, it doesn't matter because we're going to roll it out after it's chilled. You can freeze this if you don't want to make it today. Uh, just date it and label it so you don't look at it in six months and say, what the heck is that in my freezer? All right. So you're going to fold it over and you're going to give this baby a rest. So let's say you want to make it today. You're going to give this a rest of maybe about an hour or two in the fridge. If you want to rush it up, you can actually put it in the freezer. And now, because it's all wrapped, the baby's in the bed, all tucked in. Now you can push and get it to about a one inch thick disc, even if it's like an oblong, whatever it is. All right. So I go into the fridge now or into the freezer at this point with our sugar cookie crust dough. So my beautiful sugar cookie crust dough has been chilling. I took it out. I left it out for maybe half hour to an hour, depending on how cold your fridge is, because sometimes it can get really hard. So you want to make sure that you can roll it out. And don't worry if it gets a little soft. I've rolled it out to about um, a 12 to 13 inch circle. I say 12 inches on my recipe, just enough so our 10 inch false bottom tart pan gets covered on the bottom and up the sides. Now, it will break when you transfer it. Don't worry. This is not like a pat brise. You know, a pie crust that you might make, you know, a flaky pie crust that you might make for an apple pie or a blueberry pie. This is different. This is super tender because the butter was literally uh, surrounding um, all the flour particles. So there's no, really very little gluten. So I'm using um, my little, my giant spatula, also known as a Kuchenlooser. And you can get these online, they're fabulous. But if you don't have one, don't worry. Um, and I'm just gonna gingerly bring this over. It will break, don't get upset, it will break. And I'm gonna put that in. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Just watch, gently. You wanna treat this dough very, very gently because you don't wanna develop any gluten. So if you want, you can actually bring it onto your work surface. If you do have any dough left, you could either refreeze it and use it for another small tart, or you can make cookies. Um, and I love to do that. So you're gently going to bring it in. If you see it doesn't reach up the top, take some excess dough and just push. You're not going to need water. It will immediately be absorbed or incorporated into the rest of the dough. You just want to be super gentle with it. And you want to make sure you get it into all the insides. Now, I did spray my 10 inch false bottom tar pan with nonstick cooking spray. And you're like, why? Why would you do this, you crazy woman? Because it has so much butter in the crust anyway. I do it for insurance. So if it does stick a little bit, uh, it surely won't because of that nonstick cooking spray. It, it should come right out of the pan when I'm ready to serve it. So you want to go up maybe at least half inch above the, the sides, all the way around. You can see, right? And then we're going to take our rolling pin and do my rolling pin trick, which a lot of people do, uh, and it works beautifully. So you're just going to bring it up. If it's so thin, your crust, that you can actually see your pan through it, reinforce it with a little more dough. 
all right? And this is something, this is probably the most time-consuming part of the tart because you want it to look so pretty and you want it to hold that beautiful lime curd and that glorious meringue. It's going to be glorious. This is a wonderful light dessert uh, for someone who really doesn't want a heavy dessert. You know, they don't want chocolate. And occasionally there's people like that that don't like chocolate. I don't know who they would be, but I love lemon and lime myself. And a lime curd is super nice and light. If you don't like lime, you can just switch out um, the uh, lime curd for lemon curd. And we're going to make that in a little while when this is in the oven. All right, rolling pin. All right, drum roll, please. And we're going to roll it right over. All right. And you should have, not too thick, but you see if you roll it over, it cuts it right in. And then you can just sort of get all the excess off. Those are going to make either a nice little tart later on or some sugar cookies. Yes. All right. You can even bake them like that. Sometimes I just bake the scraps. I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to make sure if there's any dough in between the little lattice um, flute or the flutings or the little areas around the edge of the pan, I just get that excess dough off. All right, now it goes right on a foil lined sheet pan. You don't want to bake this by itself in the oven. And then we're going to dock it and fill it with raw beans. But first I'm going to wash my hands. So I've just washed my hands. I have a fork. This is known as docking or stippling. It's an old fashioned term in which you're just going to put some fork marks into the bottom of the crust. And this prevents any type of steam from coming up and lifting up your dough away from the pan, creating sort of like, you know, like a hump or a hill. And you don't want that to happen, but we're also going to do even more insurance. I love insurance. I love things that always go right. And that's why I spray my pan first. And that's why I dock or stipple. So you get the fork away. I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper. I'm going to fit it in gently without ruining my crust. And I'm going to put some pie weights in. Now, these are black beans that I've never eaten. I've never cooked. They are dry. And I'm just going to put them in so that they come all the way up the sides. I tend to overfill my pie shell, whatever it is, or my tart shell, because I really want the sides to stay um, up. Because sometimes when it's in the oven, the sides can go down, and then you end up with a Frisbee that tastes good, but you can't put any filling in it. All right, we want it to be an actual shell. So once this is filled, I'm going to put this in the oven filled with the beans on 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes. So my tart shell came out. I baked it blind, which means we use the parchment paper with, with the beans or the pie weights. Now, it needed a few extra minutes because I wanted you to bake it between 12 and 15 minutes or until it was cooked on the bottom and lightly brown. So you want to make sure you don't see any doughy areas. And you'll know what I mean when you see that. The doughy areas are darker and they don't look cooked through. So for our meringue topping, which we're not ready for yet, we will use six egg whites. So because we don't want a soggy bottom and we're not talking diapers people, we don't want a soggy bottom crust because whenever you have some sort of a custard filling and that's what a lime curd is, you don't want a soggy bottom. So we're going to ensure, again, I'm your insurance chef. So we want to make sure that there's a barrier between the crust and the filling. And we're going to use a few little bit of that egg white. So I have six egg whites that are coming to room temperature for our meringue. And I took a little bit of those egg whites, maybe a tablespoon or two. That's it. And make sure you don't separate those egg whites and actually in introduce any fat into those egg whites or they won't beat up uh, into a glorious meringue. So I have a little bit of the egg white, all right, which we did not whip up yet, of course. And now I'm going to coat with a pastry brush the bottom of our beautiful tart shell. And you're going to be real gentle. 
And then we're going to put it back in the oven. And we're going to do this for maybe a few minutes. We're going to put it back in the oven because the egg white will coat it. It will give that little protein coating, all right, around the bottom. You can go up the sides a little bit. And we're just going to put it back in the oven long enough that it bakes uh, and cooks through because we don't want to be eating raw egg white, okay? So there we have it. Now we're going to put it back in the oven and we're going to prevent a soggy bottom. So my tart shell came out of the oven. I put it in the oven at 375 with our beautiful egg white wash for about three minutes until it just cooked through. And now I'm going to take half a teaspoon of unflavored gelatin and I'm going to bloom it. So I need to hydrate it a little bit. So I have half a teaspoon and I'm going to put in about two teaspoons of water, cold water. You always want to mix gelatin with a cold liquid until it blooms. And that means it's going to thicken and we're going to put it into our lime curd after it gets nice and hot because you want to melt it down into a hot liquid. Now, you don't have to stabilize um, with gelatin your lime curd. I know Martha does uh, when she makes lime curd, but not everybody does. But I'm going to do it because we want a nice clean cut. So in a saucepan, we are going to put one cup of granulated sugar. We're going to put half a cup of fresh lime juice. We're going to put the zest of one large lime right in there. I'm going to get all this out of the way. Four large eggs, the entire egg, plus one yolk. All right, that's all going to go in here. You do not want this to boil. And then you're going to put in one and a half sticks of butter that's been cut into chunks. Now, this is a curd, so it's a stovetop custard. It is going to you want to break up those yolks. You want the butter to melt, but you don't want it to come to a boil. All right. And then once everything thickens and yolks and eggs in general thicken when they're heated. So it looks a little, a little weird now, but it's gonna all come together in the end, folks. You just don't want it to get too, too hot. So no boiling. Better to take a little bit longer than go overboard with the heat. We are gonna put it into an ice water bath, which I have set up on my marble slab, because that'll stop the cooking process. And that will actually uh, stop anything from curdling. And if it did curdle a little, as sometimes eggs do when they get too hot, it will catch them. And I can smell the lime. It smells just beautiful. And just get all around here. You got to be patient. You don't want to walk away. Don't answer the door. Don't, don't answer the phone. Have somebody else do it. Lime curd on the stove is for you to sort of enjoy and just stare into it and watch it thicken. And then once it thickens, we can turn down the heat and put in our gelatin because we need it to melt down. So you see the butter melted. And eventually you will see this come to a bare simmer. That means not quite a simmer but I'm being very gentle with it. This is something that you sort of have to have with kid gloves on because you want it to thicken but not curdle. And there is a difference. And yet, if you do heat it too high and it does curdle, do not despair. Okay, do not despair. 
because you can put it through your sieve in your ice water bath and you will actually, that will catch the curdles and the little bits of egg that cook too much. So we're, you can always take it off the heat too. So I always have a hot mitt nearby to take it off if it gets too hot and it ever does start to boil or you turn your heat down. This is an induction hot plate, so it turns down really, really quickly. But this will take a little while. Give yourself like 10 minutes to do this, you know, on and off, depending on how easily your burner gets hot. All right, and you put everything all at once. It's super easy to do. There's no cornstarch in here. Thicken completely with your eggs. And eggs are so cool as a protein and as an ingredient. They're a key ingredient in all baked goods and a baker's friend. So I can see puffs of steam coming. That means any water that's in the lime juice is starting to evaporate. So we're getting close to almost boiling, which we really don't want. I do feel it's a little bit thicker. You can see it's a little thicker. And you can see the lime zest swirling around there. The butter is still melting, so we have to be careful. And it's not going to get that thick right now. It's got to really get cold before it gets to its full thickening strength. All right, so I'm, I'm watching it now. Okay, not yet, but you can see it's getting thicker. playing around with my heat. Can you see it? You can actually see that it leaves a trail with that whisk. You want to get into all the edges of your pan. And you can see the steam. The steam means that you're getting close to the boiling point and you want to be careful. Okay, now I'm boiling, so I want to be careful. Now I'm actually going to take it off the heat and I'm just going to mix in our gelatin, which sort of looks like a little rubbery mass, and that's exactly what it should look like. We're going to put it in there, and we're just going to put it in and whisk it in, and that's going to melt down the gelatin, and then when it gets cool, it's going to do its wonderful stabilization trick where it sort of thickens up that, that lime curd really well. Now it looks loose now. It won't be when it's done. So. Now we're going to pour it in through our sieve into our ice water bath. Pour that in there. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. You can see in the pan there may be a little bit of some uh, egg protein. You don't worry about it. That happens because of the heat. All right. We're going to let it go through. And you can see it on the other side here. And when it cools, it's going to be thick, citrusy, and glorious. So I'm just going to let that go through the sieve. I'm going to take a spoon and stir it, and I'm going to let it cool down a bit. So my lime curd cooled in the ice water bath, stopping the cooking process. Then I poured it into my tart shell, and then I put it into the fridge on the sheet pan just to sort of spread it out and increase the surface area so the gelatin could do its work and actually uh, thicken it even faster. In my electric mixing bowl, I have six egg whites minus that itty bitty little bit that we did to create that non-soggy bottom of our tart shell and we just brushed it, remember? And now I'm going to beat it with our whip attachment. We're gonna make our beautiful meringue because this is really a lime curd meringue pie and you're gonna hear a lot of noise. <coughs> when it gets a little foamy, you're gonna take a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That's gonna increase the stabilization. It's not gonna increase the volume, it's gonna make it more stable. So once I get a little, a little foaminess and it comes within a few seconds, I'm gonna add my cream of tartar. And I have one cup of granulated sugar. And that is going to be used to create this beautiful, beautiful, what's known as a 
French meringue or a common meringue. It doesn't get any cooking and this is what you get. So once it gets nice and soft peaks, we don't have it at the highest level yet. We're not on warp speed just yet. We're gonna gradually start adding our sugar, about a tablespoon at a time. And you wanna let it get incorporated before you add the next tablespoon. All right, because we want to get stiff peaks, but if you let it go too high, too fast, you're going to end up with soap suds. Uh, egg whites that are dry, that will not look beautiful and glossy like they should. And they look gorgeous. So keep going, tablespoon at a time. I love making these meringues. Uh, I just take my six egg whites, leave them out uh, for about an hour, or you can even put it into a warm bowl of, uh, or a bowl of warm water and warm them up because the warmer egg whites are, the better they beat up. Because they have a surface tension. And if you break into that surface tension because they're warm, you'll actually get a better, more beautiful meringue. If they're cold, then the beater has to work through that surface tension that's not sort of relaxed from being out at room temperature. Now we go to warp speed. And we sort of let it go until it's really nice and stiff. In the meantime, my tart shell with the lime curd is in the fridge. Let's see how we are. We want stiff peaks. Oh yeah, baby, we got stiff peaks. That means that the peak of the meringue goes sky high, all right, and it's stiff. It's not curling over on itself. This is a perfect meringue, all right. <coughs> so I'm going to just bang it. Now I get my tart. So I got my tart and it's beautiful and it's cooling down lovely in a lovely way. And look at this, look at this. So I'm gonna sort of put spoonfuls on. If you call these spoonfuls, look at this. Oh, wow. Mountains of meringue. Oh, nothing says loving like mountains of meringue. And then I'm gonna take an offset spatula, and we're gonna make some mountains and valleys and ups and downs. Ooh, baby. What you wanna do is seal it right to the tart shell. So seal it right to the tart shell. See what I'm doing? I'm gonna rotate it, seal it right to the tart shell so that the meringue is sealed right on it. All right, but everyone knows when they see this what they're going to get, right? They don't know it's lime, but they do know it's going to be this beautiful meringue tart. Beautiful. And we're just going to seal it all the way around. So that means you want to make sure the meringue touches the tart shell. All right, touches the tart shell. How's that for a little, a little alliteration? All right, and then we're gonna do some valleys and ups and downs, little waves. Little wave. We're gonna make waves. You just wanna just swirl it. Just have fun with it. Oh, look at this. Beautiful, ooh. Just beautiful up and down up and down and there's a reason why we do this you'll see oh, look at this beautiful now you could do this all day but we don't want to lose air on our meringue right so i think this is nice do you think this is nice you ready now we blow to And if you don't have a blowtorch, don't worry. Because 
you can put it under the broiler, but this is much more fun. Am I scaring you? Be scared. You're just gonna go gently around, get a little color. Woo! Get a little singeing, a little color. All right. And this just sort of cooks the outside. All right. You'll know how close to put it. Get yourself a blowtorch. You're so much fun. I love my blowtorch. Just keep going around. You don't want it too dark. Just brown and lovely. And if you don't have a blowtorch, put it under your broiler. Just don't walk away because uh, broilers, yeah, they're forever. They will burn your meringue. Oh, this is so lovely. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm in love with this. I'm in love with this. I'm in love with this blowtorch, but I love this meringue. Oh, it's lovely. Look how it's coloring so nicely. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You are gonna get oohs and ahs from this tart, oh yeah. Now, what you wanna do is you're gonna put this whole thing in the fridge for a couple of hours. You wanna try to do this right before you serve or up to a day uh, before you serve, all right? And you're gonna serve it right from the fridge. Ooh, I think we're there. I think Chef Gail has to stop because I love my blowtorch. So there you have your beautiful lime meringue tart, and it's spectacular. And it's a curd. It's something a little different. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you become a subscriber. Until next time.